Diyos ay tapat. Kahit po tayo ay hindi tapat, siya po ay mananatiling tapat. tapat Because that is his character. Hmm. This morning, we're going to start a new series on the courts of heaven. The title of this message is Making Satan a Defendant in the Court of Heaven. Now, the word dependent means an individual or company or institution sued or accused in a court of law. In Revelation chapter 12 verse 10, we are being accused by the devil. Where? There is only one way that you are being accused in the court. In the court of heaven day and night. Now, madalas tayo ang akusado, tayo ang dependent. And how are we going to reverse it? Siya naman ang dependent, tayo naman ang petitioner. Yan ang ating pag-aaralan. Series, because we cannot do it in just one setting, we will have to have a series of teaching on making Satan a defendant, defendant in the courts of heaven. Okay, so sa lahat po ng ating mga nakikinig ngayon, tayo po ay... Uh, Manalangin at hingiin ang ating pong patnubay mula sa ating Ama. Father, we just thank you today because you are here with us and you are not limited by time and space. Father, I ask for a revelation and understanding of your word to each listeners today na nakikinig ngayon live at even yung makikinig pa later on sa YouTube at dito po sa Facebook. We thank you so much, Lord, for each one of us even yung mga nasa Zoom, participants ngayong maga, we ask for your anointing be upon them, Father. All of us, Lord, that we can understand your very word. We thank you so much, Father. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, this is one of the, one of the exciting topics. How are we going to make Satan a defendant in the courts of heaven? Now, this is our introduction. The topic of spiritual warfare has become popular among Christians over the past decade. One of the proponents or uh, pursuit nitong spiritual warfare is uh, Peter Wagner. He has a lot of books about spiritual warfare. And we can see that the world actually is going to hell, literally. And it concerns us. Paano natin aagawin sa kamay ng kaaway ang mundo na ito na patuloy literally going to hell? Each day, we are closer to the imposition of Satan eternal sentence, mga kapatid. This is a good thing also. As the day goes by, we are nearing to the judgment of the devil sa kanyang penitentiary we called hell. Tandaan niyo po si Satan wala pa sa hell. Hell is not the place where he operate today. Hell is a penitentiary. Kulungan niya po ito. Pagdating ng siya ay nabigyan na ng eternal judgment. Okay? And it seems the enemy is winning the battle. And why he's winning the battle? For one reason only. The body of Christ has not been trained to post him. You are not trained. Di ba sabi sa Bible? Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. 
the only thing that we know to resist him is to shout at him. And we say, I rebuke you or I resist you. That's the only thing we know. And we've been doing this for decades. At wala din naman nangyayari. Balik-balik lang siya. Di ba? Kaya ngayon ba napagod na lang eh. Hundreds if not thousands of books had been written over the past 20 years on the topic of spiritual warfare. Unfortunately, the concept of spiritual warfare is rather very complex. Kasi sabi ng 1 Corinthians 3, 1, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but a people of flesh as infant in Christ. Hindi ho masama yan pag sinabing infants in Christ or people of flesh. Ibig sabihin lang ho niyan, ang, nag, ang nagre-reign sa inyo ang inyong soul and your body. Hindi po ang inyong spirit. Okay? So not all Christians possesses the same level of spiritual maturity. That's one reason why the spiritual complex or the spiritual warfare is complex. There is spirit there is a spirit of realm mga kapatid in which there is a courtroom where legal battles are being litigated that will affect our lives here on earth. Kaya nga po sabi sa Revelation 12.10, the devil is accusing us day and night. Where? In the courts of heaven. There is a court in heaven, mga kapatid. There is a courtroom there. The battle is not in the battlefield. The battle is in the courtroom. So if you want to be involved in spiritual warfare, you need to understand the courts of heaven. By exploring God's word, we will identify this court of heaven and gain an understanding of the rules of procedure for operating in the court. Like in the, like the court here on the earth, on earth, there are procedure. There are what we call rules of court. Okay? Kaya yung mga abogado, nag-aaral sila. Kinangalang mga pasa sila sa bar para alam nila ang procedure on how to operate in the court. Okay? We will also learn to file our petitions against the enemy by praying what I will refer to as legal prayers. You know the word prayers? Prayer is not a religious term. Prayer is a judicial term. Ask any lawyer. Every time they file something in the court, they call it petition. Diba sabi sa Bible, let your petition, let your supplication be made known unto God. Petition is one kind of prayer. Right? And every lawyer, when they file a petition, sa baba nung kanilang petition, ang nakalagay doon, prayers. Something they ask from the court or from the judge. So legal prayers are those that through a process of researching God's word take his wonderful promises for our for our life and to articulate them into legal arguments cases filed against Satan in the courts of heaven Remember when when Jesus faced the devil in the mountain of temptation he uses the word of God Diba the enemy started to accuse him, and Jesus answered him through the word of God. Okay? Now, the question is, paano natin ito gagawin? Okay? In short, we will be learning to make Satan a defendant in the courts of heaven. Most of the time, we are the defendant. Why? We are being accused because we partake of his sin. 
And every time we partake his sin, we pay him. And we give and what we pay him is we give him authority to mess our life. Okay? So if you are tired of being a spectator on the sidelines in the spiritual conflicts in your life, this teaching is is one for you. Okay? So I want you to listen, take notes. You need to grab your Bible, a notepad, and let's take our enemy to the court. Okay, let's start. Now, the question is this. Is there really a court of heaven? Meron nga ba talagang court of heaven? Okay? O imbento lang natin ito? Because once we have an understanding that our conflict with Satan will take place in the spirit realm, we need to discuss the type of conflict that we will be waging. Remember, we are seated with Christ in the realm of the spirit. The devil is in the realm of the spirit. God, the Trinity, is in the realm of the spirit. Oh, the battle is in the realm of the spirit. Our intention in battling the enemy is to remove any influence he may have legally obtained from our life. You know, the enemy, the reason why he can um, influence our life is because he has what we call legal right. Binigyan mo siya ng ano, karapatan. That's why our battle is a legal one. Legal battles aren't fought in the street or behind school buildings or anywhere. They are fought in courtrooms because that is. And the devil knows it. That's why he filed petitions. He filed cases against us <coughs> in the heaven, in the court of heaven every day. Day and night. Ang sipag nga niya. <clears throat> court of heaven is about taking Satan to court. But not just any court. Nakuha niyo po. Hindi ka man pwedeng pumunta dyan sa regional trial court at mag-file ka ng case. At sabihin mo, Mr. Judge, Mag-file po ako ng case laban kay Satan. Kasi si Satan, ginawa niya po miserable ang buhay ko. Ginawa niya po kung mahirap. Ako ay may sakit. Oh. You know, poverty, sicknesses are form of injustice. Oh. Ano ang sagot sa'yo ni Judge? Sasabihin niya sa'yo, I'm sorry, sir, ma'am, wala akong jurisdiction. Kay Satan, ni hindi ko nga alam ang address saan ko ipadala ang kansomon sa kanya. Because the court of heaven will have jurisdiction over our case. Why? We are a citizen of heaven. If you are a citizen of heaven, you are a born again believer, you have a legal standing in the courts of heaven. Oh. So if there any injustice that you experience here on earth, you should go to the courts of heaven. Now, the question is, if there was a court of heaven, or a court in heaven, we could show Satan that he is a squatter. And we can ask the court to legally evict him. Because of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ, the devil lo lost his authority. To remain here on earth. He's a squatter. The only thing that he has is what we call occupancy. Occupancy right. And that occupancy right, tayo ang nagbigay doon. But ownership, he cannot have ownership over the property or the earth that was given to us by God. Why? Walang utang ang property na ito. Ang earth wala ng utang. Binayaran na ng Panginoon. Remember, sabi ng Bible, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. 
Remember, the first one that God redeemed is not man, but earth. Remember doon sa Gethsemane, yung dugo na lumabas sa kanyang mga force, bumagsak sa lupa. And that was the beginning that the earth was redeemed. And there is no time in history that God surrendered the ownership of the earth. In fact, sinabi pa niya sa Psalm 24, The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Okay? So, now we can now show him oh, that he is a squatter. And this is our responsibility, mga kapatid. Because we are the ambassador here on earth. We are the imager of God. We are the representative of God here on earth. And it is our responsibility, every territories, every boundaries that binigay sa atin ni Lord, we have to evict the squatter. And the only way you can evict a squatter is only through the court, he, even here on earth. Oh. Dito sa Mindanao, ang saying ng mga tao, ng mga squatter ay ganito, iyo ang titulo amin ang lupa. Oh, subukan mo paalisin yung mga squatter na yan. They will fight to death. Paglalaban nila ang karapatan nila kahit hindi kanila ang lupa. Same true with the devil. He knows his destiny. And the only way <laughs> we can throw him out, kick him out in our property is only in the courts of heaven. Daniel chapter 7. I said, I keep looking until thrones were set up. And the ancient of days took his seat. This is God the Father. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was ablaze with flames. Its wheel were a burning fire. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousand upon thousand were serving him, and myriads upon myriads were standing before him. The court convened, and the books were open. You see, there is a court in heaven. Okay. Another scripture in the king of in the year of the king of Zion, that I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim were standing above him, each having six wings. With two, each covered his face, and with two, each covered his feet. And with two, each flew, and one called out to another, said, Holy, holy is the Lord of, our, Lord of armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold trembled at the voice of him, who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. Every time there is a throne, God is seated on the throne. And every time he is seated on the throne, there are what? Council beside him. That's why, hindi lang mag-isa ang throne. Plural po yan, thrones. Like in Revelation. Now, above the expanse that was over their heads, there was something resembling a throne. Like lapis lazuli in appearance, and on that which resembled a throne, high up, was a figure with the appearance of man. Then I noticed from the appearance of his waist upward something like blooming metal that looked like fire all around with it. And from the appearance of his waist downward, I saw something like fire. And there was radiance around him. Like the appearance of the rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the surrounding regions. Such was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell on my face and heard a voice speaking. Revelation chapter 20, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled. And no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great, and the small standing before the throne. And the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. 
the dead were judged from things which were written in the book according to their deed. See? In the Old Testament, Daniel saw the court. Even in the New Testament, John saw it. So, the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles talk about the courts of heaven. Si Jesus mismo ang nagsabi, Matthew 5, 21-22, You have heard that the ancient that the ancient were told, you shall not murder, and whoever commits murder shall be answerable to the court. Jesus is not repairing to the earthly court. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be answerable to the court. And whoever say to his brother, you, you good for nothing, shall be answerable to the Supreme Court. And whoever say you fool shall be guilty enough to go into the fairy hell. A court that at that time did not exist in the Jewish legal system. A court that did not, did not exist in the Jewish legal system of that time, mga kapatid. Wala pang ganong klaseng court yung binabention ni Jesus. In other words, Jesus is referring to the courts in heaven. Because the courts of that day were just rabbinical courts that consisted of the lesser Sanhedrin. Jesus said that the Supreme Court handed down eternal judgment beyond any an earthly court could ever imagine. Diba? Eternal judgment. Sino magbibigay ng mag magre-release ng judgment for a person to go to hell? Only a Supreme Court in heaven. Only a court in heaven. God's seat or throne in Greek is thronos is consistently the central and the most noticeable Peace described in the room. The scripture that we read every time there is a throne, we can see God is seated on that throne. Because the throne is not only a seat of a king, it is what? A judicial seat of a judge. Because the king in the Old Testament, at the same time, he is also a judge. Adjectives such as lofty and exalted in Isaiah, high and above them in Ezekiel, are used to describe throne. That's why here on earth, the focal point of every courtroom is an elevated area that is called the bench. And it's where the judge sits. Diba? Pagpasok ng judge, everybody will stand up. And the clerk of court will say, all rise. And then, ipapakilala ng clerk of court yung judge. And then, everybody will sit. Most of us know the teaching about a single judgment. Di ba? Alam natin na merong judgment. Pa tayo namatay, i-judge tayo. Na makikita natin ito doon sa Revelation chapter 20. Why would a courtroom be necessary if there is only one judgment to take place? Diba? Why a court is necessary if there is only one single judgment to take place sa atin? Look in Isaiah 43, 25 to 26. I alone, I'm the one who wipes out your wrongdoings for my sake. I will not remember your sin. Look at the translation in ASB. Meet me in court. <clears throat> Let's argue our case together. State your cause so that you may be proved right. Isaiah saw it. Isaiah saw the court. So God told Israel to meet me in court to argue, to argue your case so you can be proven right. In other words, there was an active case against Israel in the court of heaven that God wanted to address right then and there. Gusto niya ma-address. Kaya sabi niya, come. There is a standing accusation against you. You should come. The courts of heaven also had a daily docket. <laughs> Alam niyo ba yun? 
Hindi, hindi dakit doon. Nakalista yung lahat ng mga kaso. Di ba? Look in Revelation 12.10. For the accuser of our brothers and sister has been thrown down. And the one who accuses them before our God day and night. So question, where the accusation happens? There is only one place. When you are accused here on earth, you are accused in the court. <clears throat> That's why you have to appear in the court. If you are accused by the devil in heaven, it means to say, you have sinned. Tama? So, why there is a need for a court? Because, nagkakasala pa rin tayo. Remember, anong sabi ni Jesus? Ni John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. I share this thing to you that you will not sin. But if you sin, you have an advocate in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. What is an advocate? A defense lawyer. Oh, you have a lawyer in heaven. That's why every time you partake sin, you know why? <laughs> the one who invented sin is the devil. And the devil has what we call intellectual property right on sin. So every time you partake something from the devil, you took something from the devil, you pay him. Because the sin, the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Hindi libre ang kasalanan. Mga kapatid, may bayad ang kasalanan. That's why sabi ni Jesus sa John. John 15.30 ata ang sabi niya ganito. The devil is here. But I have not, but he has not, but I have, I have nothing in me that belongs to him. That's why he cannot control me. The only, very, the very reason that the enemy can mess our life, influence our life, is we have, if we have something that belongs to him. Nakuha niyo po. So, intellectual property rights. How much is the royalty? Halimbawa, if I compose a song, that is what we call the product of, product of the mind. That's why intellectual, eh. property rights, ang tawag doon. I compose a song na gusto ni Gary Valenciano, kinanta niya. Kumita. So in other words, Gary Valenciano is required to pay me 5% as royalty. Because I own the song. Same true with the devil. Sin is owned by the devil. Every time you partake sin, you pay him. What do you pay him? You give him legal right. That's why if he has a legal right over your life, he can influence you. That's why you have to appear in the court. The use of the term before God in Revelation 12 portrays God in his capacity as a righteous judge. Oh, saan nagpapile ng uh, accusation ang piskal? Di ba sa judge? Mm. That's why he accuses them before God. It means God is sitting as a judge. And remember, if God is seated as a judge, He is always impartial. Kahit anak tayo ng Diyos, hindi tayo pwedeng kampihan ng Diyos. No, 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 no. Why? It is against his personality, his character. As a judge, he is always impartial. The court of heaven is hearing cases daily, mga kapatid. That's why ang langit, day and night, is busy because they're hearing cases daily. There would appear to be a venue to hear our complaints and causes of action against Satan for his illegal trespassing in our lives. So, kung hindi ka nag appear sa langit, I'm sorry. There is always a standing accusation against us there. Oh. Kaya nga, o day and night, ibig sabihin, there is a daily docket, may schedule, every day, may hearing doon. Mm. You need to appear. Dahil kung hindi ka mag-appear, ang tawag doon, default judgment. Talo ka. Mm. Kahit may katwiran ka, talo ka. Mm. Kasi hindi ka nag-appear sa court. 
Now, the first thing that we need to do is to identify the issue of the case. If you're going to make Satan a defendant in the courts of heaven, you need to identify the issue of the case. You may know you are right, but when you file your case, you have picked a fight. Tandaan niyo po yan. Alam mo, tama ka, pero the moment you file a case against the devil, you have picked a fight. Hmm. Bakit ko nasabi? Your opposition will not lay down for you and declare you the winner. Hindi siya basta susuko, mga kapatid. At hindi niya sasabihin, o oh, sige, talo na ako, panalo ka na. No. Satan will stop at nothing in developing a defense. Hmm. Hindi siya titigil. Alam niya na tama siya, o kahit mali siya, gagawin yung tama yun. Okay? So before we file our case against him, we will have already identified the issue that are crucial to our success. Like in a law, like here on earth, yung abogado, nagre-research yan. Inaalam niya kung may laban o mananalo sila sa kaso. We have to identify what type of case it is. That's why they call it courts of heaven. There are so many courts in heaven, mga kapatid. One is the court of accusation. Another one is the court of grace and mercy. There is also what we call the courts of inheritance. There is also court of matrimony. So there are so many courts that we can study here. So our case will always deal with the control of property. Tandaan niyo po. The case that we're going to file against the enemy is the control of property. Anong property ang ibig mong sabihin, Pastor? Wala man akong lupa. Because every case filed in the court of heaven will be a property case. Property would be an item of value that belongs to someone. Okay? Na kinuha. Okay? The property at the heart of case against Satan is our life. Our life and the destiny of God declared for that life is our property. Yan ang property na gusto na makuha ni Satan. Nakuha niyo po. Satan's plan is to take possession and control of over something that was not created to be his. This life, the destiny of this life, was created for God's glory. And the devil wants to trespass. He wants to take this property. That's why the case is always about the control of this life. Nakuha niyo po. And his plan is to take control of our life. Isaiah 43 verse 1. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who is your creator, Jacob, and he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. See? Everything that belongs to God, gusto ni Satan, mapasakan niya. So the, the issue of the case is about what? Property. It's either a physical property of yours, land, or your life. <laughs> Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. <clears throat> Maliwanag na ang sinasabi ng Panginoon, we belong to God. We are His workmanship. In other words, we are His obra maestra. Nakuha niyo po. You and I, our families, our business, our lives, everything we have and are is the property of God Almighty. Ano niyo po? Yan ang issue ng kaso na isinasampa sa atin na kaaway.
This is why Satan hates us and will go to any lengths necessary to see us destroyed. Bakit niya tayo tinitem? Bakit niya tayo gusto magkasala? There is only one reason for us to be accused in the courts of heaven and to make us disqualified sa ating inheritance. Not only does the serpent want to, to steal, to kill, and to destroy that which is God's, but he intensely, intensely desires to thwart the destiny that is ours in Christ Jesus. Gusto niyang i-thwart yung destiny natin. Kaya yan po ang issue ng kaso. Property. Our life. Our destiny. Is a property that belong to the Lord Jesus Christ only. And the devil want to trespass. And he want to take it from us. So how do we keep him from doing it? Paano natin siya pipigilan? It's only one way. Making him defendant in the courts of heaven. Hindi na pwede yung lagi tayo na lang ang nasa korte. Tayo na lang laging inaakusahan ng kaaway dahil tayo nagkasala. Now, now, po. We have to turn the table now. We make him dependent and we are now the petitioner. Most of the time, he is the petitioner. We are the accused or the dependent. We have to tell him who he is and who we are. Remember, you are what? A citizen of heaven. Who are you? Do you know? As a believer in Christ, are you someone who is different and set apart? Alam niyo ba yan? If you cannot answer this question, it will be very difficult to win your case against Satan in the courts of heaven. That is the first thing that we need to establish. We should answer that question, who are you? The book of Genesis teaches us more about who God is and who we are than any other book in the Bible. Alin niyo ba yun? Look. And so the heavens and the earth were completed on all their heavenly lights. By the seventh day, God completed His work which He had done. And He rested on the seventh day from all His work which He had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because on it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and heaven, now no shrub of the field was yet on the earth. No plant of the field had yet sprouted. For the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth. This is the most important part here. And there was no man to cultivate the ground. So God created man with dominion over the earth. The very reason God created the earth is for man to take dominion. It was not intended for the devil. Look what the devil is doing in our, in our nations. He is the one ruling. That's why the Bible says, Sabi ni Paul, he is the God of this world. But in fact, hindi siya dapat. Squatter lang siya. Mm. And why siya nakakapaghari pa rin hanggang ngayon? Because we, the Ecclesia, doesn't know how to kick or to evict the squatter. Question, are we exercising our dominion authority? If God created man with dominion over the earth, the question is, are we exercising our dominion authority? There is no way Satan can take what is not legally his. Alam niyo ba yun? Because Satan is a legalist. He knows the rule of court. He knows the law. Kaya ang tawag sa Bible, God 
God's law. Oh. Kaya dapat everything, makukuha lang niya anuang property through a legal means. Alam niyo ba yon? So, dominion is defined as a supreme authority or legal ownership. Question, who is the legal owner of the earth? Us. Even though nakuha nila kay Adan at Eva, naibalik na ng Panginoon through His death in, in the cross. Kaya ang sabi niya, it is finished. It means, the debt has been paid. Ang utang ay nabayaran na. So, ibig sabihin, na-redeem na. na ibalik na sa atin. Or it means title to an article of property which arises from the power of and the right of claiming it. Oh, dominion, yun ang ibig sabihin. We are the owner. We are the legal owner of the earth. In other words, God gave mankind the ownership of all the earth. And all the legal rights that came with that ownership, mga kapatid. Kaya kung saan ka man itinira ni Lord, like for example, dilipat kami ni Lord dito sa Dabao, now, God gave me a legal right for what is going to happen here in Dabao. Hmm. Kaya nung sinabi niya, let them have dominion. Everything shifted to the earth. Ibig sabihin, ni-remove ni Lord ang kanyang ano, sarili from the hierarchical authority here on earth. It was fully given to man. That's why ano ang sabi ni Lord? When you pray, sabi niya, this is the way you pray. Come thy kingdom, be done your will on earth as it is in heaven. Ibig sabihin, by ourselves, we cannot bring in the kingdom of God. We cannot rule the earth Basta sarili natin. We need to, to ask God. ba? Diba? Kaya alam yung temptations ni Satan kay Eve, you will be like God. Ibig sabihin ni Satan, you can rule the earth without God. Mm. Na pinaniwalaan naman ni Adan at Eva. That's the way when God said, let them have dominion, everything was shifted to the earth. And he removed himself. from that hierarchical authority here on earth. Because sabi ni Lord, the heavens of heavens belongs to God, but the earth, He was given to men. So the legal owner of the earth is man. Binigay sa atin. But how come it is the devil ang nasusunod sa ating mga territories? And He never intended to reign on earth. prior to Jesus' triumphant return and the final victory over Satan. Tayo muna ang magre-reign sa earth bago ang kanyang pangalawang pagbabalik. Naunawahan niyo po. That's why we have to practice because ang tawag sa atin ni Lord, we are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We are the kings, I mean. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The kings and Lord is not the earthly kings and the earthly lords. He is referring to us. And until we recognize that we are kings and lords, Jesus will never become king of kings and lord of lords. Kasi walang mag-appropriate kung sino siya. Tayo lang ang pwede mag-appropriate na siya yung king. Because we are the king, Jesus is the king of kings. So God intended that you and I to have ownership and authority over the earth. Yun po ang plano ng Diyos. God has its own kingdom in heaven. At yung kingdom na yon ibinigay sa atin. At gusto ni Lord yung government, kingdom means government, ay mangyari dito sa lupa. Because the earth was created as an extension of heaven to be ruled by an extension of himself. We are His, His extension. The very reason why we are here on earth, we are sent by God even before the foundations of the world. Diba sabi niya, we are being chosen by God even before the foundations of the world. In His absent, absence, tayo ang mag-rule dito sa earth. Kaya nga ang tawag sa atin ay ano? Ambassador. Hmm. 
And there is a legal term for such a transaction. Alam niyo kung anong tawag doon? Power of attorney. Mga kapatid, each one of us was given by God a power of attorney. A power of attorney is a legal instrument authorizing a person to act as the agent or attorney of the person granting it. Di ba? May kamag-anak kayo sa state. May lupa siya rito na gustong ibenta. May ibibenta lang yon. in his behalf kung bibigyan kanya ng ano, power of attorney. Ikaw ang magpiperma dun sa deed of sale. Same true. With God. He gave us power of attorney. He wants us to rule the earth. In that single moment of creation, alam niyo ba, God gave us legal authority to act on His behalf upon the earth. Very, ano, di ba? Nakakamangha na ba? Binigyan tayo ng, ng Panginoon ng ganong klaseng kapangyarihan na pamahalaan itong lupa na ito. You know, that concept is colonization of the earth. Like the Philippines, we were being colonized by, by the Spain, by Spain, Japan, and America. Nung panahon ng Kastila, ang hari ng Espanya nagpapadala ng gobernador general sa Pilipinas. At ang lahat ng kalooban ng hari ay ipinadadaan niya sa gobernador general. At ang gobernador general ang nag implement ng utos ng hari. That's why when we were colonized by the Spaniards, they changed our culture. They changed our religion. They changed our language. They changed the way we dress. They changed our language. Nakuha niyo po? Yun ang konsepto ng colonization. And the very purpose of God is to colonize the earth. To make the earth the extension of heaven. And the root word for colonization is colony. And defined as a body of people living in new territory but retaining ties with the parent state. Imagine noon, nagkaroon na tayo ng ano bang tawag doon? Independence. But the truth is, we're still under the control of the Americans. They decide who will be the next president. Alam niyo ba yun? Oh. Who are the senators? They control. Mm. Because they feel, even though we have independence, the truth is, no. They still control us. Sa paanong paraan? Pinauutang tayo ng pinauutang. You know that? And every utang na ating gagawin, merong kulatilya sa ibaba. May footnotes doon. May condition. Alam mo ano sa condition doon? Na huwag tayong maghukay ng oil. Huwag tayong magmimina ng oil. That was one of the kulatilya. Conditions. Every time na tayo nangungutang sa World Bank. Kaya pansin niyo. Tayo lang almost sa bansa sa Asia ang walang sariling oil, which in fact ang dami nating oil, lalo dito sa Mindanao. Eh bakit hindi natin minahin yan? It's because it's in the contract. Why? Because the Americans want us to be what? Consumer only. That's why mahirap tayo. Colony. That's the reality. God's creation of earth Mankind was charged with establishing his government, furthering his interest and bringing heaven and its custom to earth as is in heaven. Yan ang mission natin. We are charged to establish God's government. We are not charged to build religion. We are not charged to build churches. Okay, magtayo ko ng church. Pero ang pinaka-purpose ng church na yan ay ano? To bring the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. To establish the government. That's why Christians should be involved in politics. Pastors should be involved in business. Pastors should be involved in media or education. Pero nung ginawa natin, we concentrate ourselves. Naging pastoral na lang tayo. 
doon na lang sa mga sa apat na corner ng ating simbahan, simbahan lahat ng papasok doon aalagaan natin. There's nothing wrong with that. But the thing is, our first and mandated mission or charge is to establish his government here on earth. Oh. Look at your community. Sino may control ng ekonomiya ng bansa, ng, ng iyong community? Di ba yung mga unbeliever? Na dapat yung mga kristyano. Sino may control ng ano? Nung government? Yung mga unbeliever. Bakit? Ayaw natin makialam. Di ba? Because we're being infiltrated by the devil and believing us na yung politics ay masama. Mm. That's why, oh, this year may election, barangay election. I encourage the pastor or your member of your church to run as kagawad or barangay captain. Start to rule in a small community. Kung hindi pa kayo mag-mayor, ay doon muna kayo sa baba. So pag hindi pa kayo nanalo, mag-volunteer kayo as lupon or barangay, uh, barangay tagod. Di ba? Psalm chapter 8. Verse 4 to 6, What is man that you think of him, the son of man that you have concerned about him? Yet you have made him a little lower than God. So original translation for Elohimian, referring to the angels. And you crown him with glory and majesty. You have, you have him rule over the works of your hands, and you have put everything under his feet. See? That is our dominion. That's why the devil's hate us so much because instead that authority was given to him that dominion was given to him it was given to us you have put everything under his feet oh you have him rule over the works of your hands mm. lahat ng ginawa ni Lord ibinigay sa atin ipinagkatiwala sa atin alam niyo ba yun? Hindi lang I believe itong physical realm, including the realm of the spirit, may, meron tayong role na gagampanan. Oh, Matthew 6, 9 to 10. Our Father who is in heaven, how will be your name? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, our will as colonizers here on earth, that everything happening here should reflect what is happening in heaven. So, kung anong nangyayari sa langit, at kung anong meron sa langit, dapat meron sa lupa. At kung anong mga bagay na wala sa langit, wala din sa lupa. Drug addiction ay wala sa langit. Kaya dapat hindi nag exist yan sa lupa. Greediness ay wala sa langit. Kaya dapat hindi mag-exist sa lupa. Ganawan niyo po. Yun ang ibig niyang sabihin. We are the colonizer. The Lord has bring us here to colonize this earth for Him. Oh, sabi niya, I will give you keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. The term bind translates as forbid. And the word loose translates as permit. Okay? So whatever we forbid here on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever we permit here will be permitted in heaven. You see? That's why, example, the, the soggy bill. The last administration na matay na yan. We made a petition in the courts of heaven. Now, here you are again. These senators keep filing this, this uh, bill. And even in Congress, hindi mo na sila nakikinig sa religious organization ngayon. That's the reason why we need to appear in the court. We need to file a case against Satan. So pag di tayo nag-appear, nag-appear sa heaven, sa court of heaven, about the soggy bill, mapapasa yan. I'll give you an example. 1973, Roe versus Wade, 
in the Supreme Court is about abortion, Roe versus Wade. Natalo ang pro-life, 1973. Dineclared ng Supreme Court that abortion is the constitutional right of every American citizen. What was the problem? And I know, hindi pa naman namin alam, hindi pa naman siguro nila alam about the courts of heaven. That's why the case, they lost in the Supreme Court. And the good news is, 2022, it was reversed. Bawal na ngayon ang abortion. Diniklara na ng ano, Supreme Court ng America. You see? And I believe the Christian there went to the court and filed a petition and make Satan a dependent in that court. Nakuha niyo po. Ganun din tayo. Ang hinihintay ni Lord is the body of Christ to come together and appear to the, higher, to the highest voice. Kasi yung mga congressman, mga senador na yan, tandaan nyo, hindi yan makikinig sa atin. Sino lang yung may malakas na boses, yung may ganito. They will listen. And they will justify it. Kaya alam nila sa konsensya nila na mali. Basta you have this, you have itong tatlong ito, meron ka niyan. They will pass. Alam niyan. Legal ang ano ngayon eh. Sa kongreso, legal ang lobbying. Okay. Oh. And as a believer, the only way we can lobby is in the courts of heaven. Bring the case in the courts. Kaya sabi ng Lord, meet me in the court. Meet me in the court. Present your case so that you will be justified. Oh. Satan envy, envy us. Because only through mankind can he exercise dominion over the earth. Alam niyo ba yun? The devil cannot exercise dominion over the earth. Kasi tandaan nyo, kahit nung si Adan at Eva ay nagkasala, he becomes the de facto God of this world. But he cannot just rule the earth without man. Why? God did not surrender the ownership of the earth. Kaya gagamitin pa rin niya ang tao na mag-build ng altar mag-open ang gate para siya makapasok sa particular territory. Nakuha niyo po? Like for example, kung yung mga tao nag-worship sa isang idol, and that community become his territory. Kasi yung mga tao, the more people worship on that idol, he has an altar, he has a gateway, he has an access on that territory. But the moment the believers in that place start to build an altar, it becomes what? A battle of altar. The altar of the kingdom of God and the altar of the kingdom of darkness. Sila na maglalaban. And God always will win. Why? The principle is this. The law of dominion. The spirit being from the kingdom of darkness or from the kingdom of God cannot enter the earth Without an altar or without a gateway. Without a gate. So when, when the people of God start to establish an altar, what will happen? It will open a portal in heaven. And the angels and the armies of the kingdom of God can freely come into the territory and arrest those demonic spirits that is wandering and controlling the people. That's why Satan envy us. He cannot rule the earth without us. Kaya nga tayo, tinutukso niya. Gusto niya tayong magkasala para makuha na niya yung legal right. Ano, ano, ano po? So if he can entice us into giving dominion to him, then through us, he can influence what goes on in heaven itself. O-control na niya. 
He can only possess dominion rights on earth if we give them to Him. Paano natin binibigay sa Kanya? When you partake what, he belo what belongs to Him. Sin belongs to Him. That's why sabi niya, the wages of sin is death. Ang sin may bayad. Kaya nga, katama yung kasabihan, no free lunch. Alam niyo ba yun? Even our salvation are not free. Alam niyo ba yun? It's not free. Jesus paid for it. Nireceive lang natin na free. Pero, may bayad yun. Yung kaligtasan natin, binayaran ni Jesus yun ang sarili niyang dugo. A kingdom on earth has boundaries that can be identified on a map or seen with our own eyes. Di ba? Pag tingin mo ang mapa, Pilipinas, Indonesia, Malaysia, o oh, yan, may mga boundaries yan. And a kingdom is owned by a monarch with ownership right over its properties and influence over all that goes in there. Like for example, yung Malaysia. Malaysia is a monarchy. May king, meron silang uh, Thailand is a monarchy also. Meron din silang king, di ba? England, meron silang mo monarchy din sila. Kingdom sila. Ang hari ay mayaman based on the size of his territory. He is powerful and is rich based on the size of his territory. That's why ang mga king nakikipagera. Ano ang purpose niya? To colonize, to conquer more territories para siya ay maging makapangyarihan at yumaman. And in Luke chapter 12:32, so don't be afraid little flock, for it is for it gives your father a great happiness. To give you the kingdom. See? Binigyan tayo ni Lord ng kaharian. The kingdom of heaven belongs to us. That's why we are all kings and lords ang tawag sa atin. It is His happiness to give us His kingdom. The word kingdom consists of prefix king and suffix dom. Nang ibig sabihin, king means he rules and reigns. Dom is a noun suffix meaning realm or jurisdiction. So Jesus said that it would be God's great pleasure to give us the reign of monarch over his realm on earth. Kaya nga ambassador ang tawag sa atin. Binigyan tayo ni Lord ng power of attorney para ano, mag-rule and reign dito sa lupa. Kaya pag nalaman mo kung sino ka mga kapatid, sa totoo lang, si Satan, yung mga demonyo, pagdating mo sa isang territory, tatakbo na yan. Kilala ka niya eh. Paano ka niya nakilala? Alam niya kung sino ka. Sabi ni Jesus, But he replied, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God in other towns too because that is why I was sent. See? Our Lord declares that the purpose for which he came, example, to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. I was always taught that Jesus came to die only for our sin. No. No. However, Jesus teaches us that the, not only that He was sent to make a way for our salvation, He was sent to teach us the connection between God and mankind and restore mankind's rightful ownership interest to the earth. What Jesus taught is the gospel of the kingdom. It's not the gospel of salvation. Because the gospel of salvation is only the end. It's only the means. To the end. In the end is what? For mankind take ownership of the earth. At tayo ang mag sa earth. Because the Lord has given us legal right. So question, how can Satan's undeniable influence on the earth today be explained? Paano natin ma-explain? Paano natin ma -explain? Jesus already died on the cross. But why still the devil are the one 
ruling and influencing our government, our society. If Christ's death restored to us the Genesis 1.26 dominion and the authority over the earth, how is our enemy's influence on the earth more prevalent today than any time in history? Isipin niyo po. Kung namatay na si Cristo Cruz Albario, na ibalik na yung authority sa atin, bakit hanggang ngayon ang earth, ang ating society is still controlled and managed by the kingdom of darkness? Unless we understand our ownership interests on the earth, we cannot assert those rights in an eviction proceeding filed with the court of heaven. We need to understand our ownership. And in that dominion, ownership, he gave us what we call legal right. Tandaan niyo po. Every time we talk about the courts of heaven, we are talking about the legal right. We were the original legal title holders. Parang ganito lang yan eh. May lupa, meron kang lupa, may titulo. Isinanglak mo sa bangko. Sa likod, i-annotate yung title mo na yan ay nakasangla sa bangko na ito. But the moment na ito'y natubos mo, buburain yan. Papalitan na yan. Lalabas na doon, wala ka ng utang. Parang certificate of registration ng sasakyan mo. Pag ito'y naka uh, incumber sa isang bangko, nakalagay kung sino may-ari. The moment you fully paid the car, papalitan yung ano yan, yung CR. Tatanggalin na yung ano, yung bangko na nakapangalan doon, ipapangalan na yun sa iyo. We are the original legal title holders of the kingdom on earth through our proxies, Adam and Eve. Sila, sila yung binigyan ni Lord eh. However, due to their tragic blunder in the Garden of Eden, that is, rebellion, mankind's legal ownership interest was forfeited to a cunning and devious snake. The Hebrew word there is nakash. For the snake. And during his reign on earth, Satan, remember, was not a good steward. In fact, he was a ruthless tyrant. Hmm. He tormented mankind with darkness, despair, disease, and death. Oh. That's why I said 59. But your wrongdoings have caused a separation between you and your God. And your sin have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with wrongdoings. Your lips have spoken deceit. Your tongue matters wickedness. Their works are works of wrongdoing and an act of violence in their hands. Their feet run to evil and they hurry to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of wrongdoing. Devastation, destruction are in their paths. Under the influence of Satan reigns on earth, the kingdom God created for mankind on earth quickly went to hell. Yan po ang nangyari. And God devised a counter move to usurp the authority that had been voluntarily forfeited by Adam and Eve. So, nag-device ang Diyos ang plano para makuha niyo ito ulit. Kaya ang sabi niya sa Genesis 3, 1 to 5, This is his plan. I will make enemies of you and the woman in your offspring and her descendant. And he shall bruise you on the head and you shall bruise him on the heel. That's why in the cross, the devil bruises the heel of Jesus Christ. But God bruised the head of the, of, the, of the serpent. As God cursed Satan, a redemptive work was set in motion. Nagsimula doon. That's why sabi nga ng Bible, He died even before the foundations of the world. I cannot explain that. Hindi pa tayo ginagawa na matay na si Kristo para sa atin. Hindi pa tayo nagkakasala na matay na siya para sa atin. 
Isaiah 59. Now the Lord saw and it was displeasing in his sight that there was no justice. And he saw that there was no one and was amazed that there was not one to intercede. Then his own arm brought salvation to him and his righteousness upheld him. So God chosen legal representative to litigate the dispute over the ownership of the earth. He sent his own son, Jesus Christ. Because God's law said, all men for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So in other words, walang sino man sa lahay ni Adan ang pwede maging Savior. Because all have sinned. Second, without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission of sin. That's why God himself became man and died on the cross. He had chosen his own arm that is Jesus, to represent him and his interest in that litigation. You know, our salvation is the result of a court decision. Alam niyo ba yun? Jesus Christ gave God the legal right to forgive us and to express his passion towards us. That's why John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. So, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ gave God the Father a legal right to express his passion, his love to us. Hindi niya sinabi na, o sige, pinatatawad ko na ang kasalanan ang lahat ng tao sa kasalanan nila. No. He has to obey or to follow the law. Legally, we need to be redeemed. Legally. Nakuha niyo po? Kasi sabi ng Bible, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. So that was stated in His law. So God has to obey or follow the law. Now judgment is upon this word. Now the ruler of this word will be cast out. Having canceled the certificate of death consisting of decrees against us. See, there is a decrees against us. There are laws that we have disobeyed. And kinancel ni Lord yung certificate of death. Kaya sabi niya, which was hostile to us and he has taken it out of the way. He being nailed to the cross. And when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them. He being triumphed over them through him. Mm. Alam niyo po yung ginawa ni Lord. Sabi niya, he made a public display of them. There is a cultural background here. Every time... The head of the army, every time they conquered a city, yung army na natalo nila, ipinaparada nila. Alam niyo ba yun? The general of the army nasa unahan at yung mga sundalo ng mga natalo nila, nakagapos at pinaparada nila at pinapakita sa tao. At sinasabi nila, oh, ito mga army na ito ay hindi na pwedeng lumaban sa atin. They are already defeated. Okay? Pero sa totoo lang, bago sila iparada, alam niyo ginagawa nila? Tinatanggalan sila ng tam sa kamay at sa paa. Bakit tinatanggalan sila ng tam? Subukan yung maghawak ng isang bagay na hindi kasama ang tam. You cannot hold. Right? Kaya sinasabi ng general, di rin sila makatakbo ng mabilis. Kasi ano, wala silang tam sa paa. So, sasabihin ng general army, General of the Army, sabi niya, kahit pa magkaisa yung mga yan, they don't have any power even to hold a knife. Kaya hindi nyo dapat katakutan yan. Kasi, talunan na yan. So, he made a public display of them. Nakawa niyo po? Pero ito ang tanong. Bakit ang mga Kristiyano kung makapag-rebuke ay wagas? feeling nila 
talunan tayo at siya ang panalo. Alam niyo ang reason? Wala sila sa parada. Hindi nila nakita that Jesus already made a public display of them. That the enemy is already defeated. When Jesus died, legal title or dominion on the earth was transferred back to mankind. Ano ginawa ni Lord? Canceling the contract between mankind and Satan in the Garden of Eden. Ayan po anong yari. Kaya ang tawag ni Lord, certificate of death. That's why it is finished means the debt has been fully paid. At the cross of Calvary, Jesus stripped Satan of his legal right to the earth and restored God's original plan for mankind to have dominion and authority over the earth. Sa atin ibinigay. Pero kung hindi tayo mag-aak as his true representative, imager, ambassador, still magro-rule pa rin siya. From the point forward, mga kapatid, any satanic influence in the life of man became illegal. Illegal. Hindi niya tayo pwedeng saktan. Hindi niya tayo pwedeng nakawan. Illegal na siya na nakawan niya tayo. Unless it was contractually transferred back to the enemy through our sin. That's why nagkakaroon siya ng legal right every time We, as believers in Christ, commit sin. That's the reason why you need to go to the court. Kasi every day, you're being charged in the court because of our failure to live a life that is pleasing to our God. Nothing happens on earth unless it is done in accordance with God's law. That's why the Bible said, the Bible is what? The law of God, God's law. So nothing happens on earth unless it is legal. Kaya pag may nangyari ta sa ating masama, legal yun. Bakit? Pinayagan natin eh. We gave the devil a legal right to oppress us, to influence us. But unless he has no legal right, dili siya pwedeng lumapit sa atin. Kahit dulo ng daliri mo, hindi niya pwedeng pakialaman. Because the devil knows the rule of court. He can only influence man if he has a legal right. What does it mean to be legal? The word legal is defined as deriving authority from or founded on the law or established by law, confirming to or permitted by. So if there is permission from us, it becomes legal. So the ultimate source of all law is the Bible. So iron, ironically, for Satan to operate legally on earth, he must operate in accordance with God's law. That's why when he faced Jesus on that mountain, he uses the word of God. Because he cannot operate here in on earth without using the law of God. Do not be fooled. Satan knows very well that the only way he can be bested with legal authority on earth is by an assignment to that authority by the one who has it. And who has the authority? Us. And the authority that he is using against us is the very same authority that the Lord given to us. Kaya ang tawag dyan, ginigisa ka sa sarili mong mantika. Little children, make sure no, dis no one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. 
So how does the enemy gain legal right in our lives on the earth? Through our sin. The enemy needs only a crack to gain a legal access to our life. Maliit lang. Pwede na siya. Ang tawag doon, foothold. Kaya sabi ng Bible, do not give him a foothold. Kaya diba sabi nila, huwag kang matutulog na ano. Huwag mo hayaan paglubugan ng galit sa puso mo. Ang, ang galit sa puso mo. Why? Because it will create a crack. And the enemy can gain access to your life. Big sin, little sin, any sin, is all that is required. What is that make our sin a doorway for Satan to gain legal access to our life? Consent. Ulitin ko po. What is that make our sin? Bak anong, bakit nagiging doorway ang kasalanan sa buhay natin? That gain legal access to our lives. Para si Satan makagain ng access sa buhay natin. Ang tawag doon ay consent. You give him consent. When we choose a path that is contrary to the word of God, we are handing Satan the keys to our life. And his status goes from illegal to legal. Hallelujah. Malungkot, no? But that's the reality. When you gave a consent to the devil by embracing his sin, his illegal thing becomes legal. And what makes it legal? Your consent. That's why never underestimate the power of our free will because God will always honor your will. This is what the Lord of Armies, the Lord of Armies says, I will punish Am Amalek for what he did to Israel in that he obstructed him on the way while he was coming up from Egypt. Now go and strike Amalek and completely destroy everything that he has and do not spare him. But put to death both man and woman, child, infant, oxen, carmel, and donkey. This was the command of God to Saul. But the thing is, Saul only partially obeyed God. His strict, his strict instruction, he spared Agag, the king. Diba? And taking the plunder from the victory. Sabi ni Lord, patayin lahat, pati bata. Sheep, camel, and donkey do not bring anything. Oh. And what happened? The Lord, there was a consequence. Now the spirit of the Lord left Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord terrified him. Saul's servant then said to him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God is terrifying you. See? Satan can reclaim legal rights in our life through our sin. Yes, kung tayo na born again, we confess our sin na patawad tayo. Kaya nga, kailangan mo ang court of heaven because every time we partake sin, we partake something that belongs to the devil, he gave, we gave him a legal right. <clears throat> Is Satan operating legally or illegally? Mm. That's the question. It is crucial that you identify any sin in your life or your family tree that gave him the legal right. Oh, naalala niyo ito? Yung bata na kinas out ni Jesus Christ at yung mga disciple ay hindi makas out yung mga disciple. When Jesus saw that a, that a crowd rapidly gathering, he rebuked and the, the unclean spirit saying, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, you came out of him and do not enter him again. And after crying out and throwing him into the terrible convulsion, it came out and the boy came so much like a curse that most of them said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him and, be, and he got up. Now, we are not given information as to any sin committed by the young boy. 
to give Satan legal rights. Di ba? Bata pa yun. Anong, nakas- anong kasalanan na nagawa niya that warrant his possession? I don't think may nagawa siya. Most likely, the enemy gained legal access through what is commonly referred to as generational sin or curse. Oh, it is a curse that passes through the generation through what we call genetic bloodline. Exodus 20 verse 5, You shall not bow down to, to them or serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, I am a jealous God. Visiting the equity, iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation to those who hate me. See? Third to fourth generations. So it is very clear that when an ancestor served pagan gods or become involved in dark arts, example, witchcraft, voodoo, spirit of the glass, ano pa man yon, etc., the legal rights given by Satan by our ancestor will visit their ancestor kasama tayo. So the longer these curses persist in families' bloodline, the more difficult it becomes to nullify them. Tandaan nyo po, Satan is an opportunist. Opportunista yan. Without opposition, he'll take until there is nothing left to take. Uubusin niya lahat yan na meron ka. Freedoms comes only through the identification of sin. We call it repentance. Daniel prayed in Daniel chapter 10. They call uh, Daniel chapter 9. Identificational repentance. He repented the sin of his forefathers. And boldly declared Satan's presence in our life as an illegal trespass. If you see evidence of his presence in your life, the only question is, Will you take the appropriate legal step to evict him? Kapag nakita mo, look at your own life. Look the life of your family and your children. Is there anything, a generational bloodline or a generational sin flowing in you? You need to confess because the basis of forgiveness of God is confession. At tandaan natin mga kapatid, Lalo's lahat tayo tayo na born again, hindi naman natin inisa-isa ang ating mga kasalanan. Di ba? We just mentioned, Lord, forgive my sin. O, di ba? But we did not confess every one of it. Hmm. That's why it is necessary when you face the courts of heaven. Once he is stripped of any legal right to operate in your life, any further interference is illegal, mga kapatid. You can now bring him to the courts of heaven because that is illegal thing na ginagawa niya. Hindi siya pwedeng gumawa ng ganon. Illegal yun. It is possible that Satan's legal access to your life was without your knowledge and cooperation. O pwede yun. Ang tawag doon ay ano, generational sin. Now, lastly, let's go to the venue. The venue of a case is defined as the place or location in which the injury or fact declared to have been done takes place. Where is the venue? Okay, sa, sa korte, sa lupa. Kung saan ka nasaktan o saan yung crime ginawa nangyari, doon dapat magpa-file ng kaso. In our case against where did Satan's breaking and entering into our lives take place? Saan sila? Saan nagtitext place yung kanyang breaking and entering into our lives? Sabi ng 2 Corinthians, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which a man is not permitted to speak. That man is referring to Paul himself. Okay? The third heaven or paradise, the Greek translation is paradison or an Eden which is the dwelling place of the soul of the righteous. Remember the guy from sa tabi niya sa Calvario, sa cross, doon, yung isang lalaki. Sabi niya, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, truly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. 
another scripture, Deuteronomy 10, 14, Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God, the earth also with all that therein. So the heaven of heavens is the throne room of God, the dwelling place of God. Another place is the heaven or the second heaven. And the third one is the earth. So the heaven of heavens is identified as where the Lord God is. The heaven or sa, Greek, sa Hebrew is Hasamayim, which translates as the abode of the stars. That is the realm of the spirit. So why are we discussing the spirit realm? Well, it is, the is this a place? This is the location from which Satan has acted. The spirit realm is where we will have to take the fight to Satan. That is the venue. The realm of the spirit. Remember, we are seated with Christ in the realm of the spirit. You were the anointed cherub who covers. And I place you there. And you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked in the midst of the sun of fire. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created until unrighteousness found. In you, by the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence and you sin. Therefore, I have cast you as a propane from the mountain of God. And I have destroyed you, covering Sherub, from the midst of the sun of fire. Your heart has haughty because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I threw you to the ground. So originally, the devil is the covering cherub. Remember the Ark of the Covenant made the long wings of the cherubim? One of the wings belongs to the devil, to Satan, to Lucifer before. He is in the mountain of God, in the third heavens. But because of his sin and rebellion against God, he was thrown to the ground or to the earth. He was cast out of the third heaven and he had free reign upon the earth. However, his legal right to exist on earth was divested to the, through the death of Jesus Christ. So he was thrown to earth, but when the death of Jesus Christ happens, he was removed of his legal right. So where is he now? So if he's not in the third heaven, he has no legal right unless we give it to him to live on the physical realm where does the kingdom of darkness reside? Sabi ng Ephesians 1, 2, 1, and 2, 1, and 2. And you were dead in your trust offenses and sin in which you previously walked according to the course of this word, according to the prince of the power of the air. Power of the air. Of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. So Satan is the prince of the power of the air. The first and the second heaven. The first is what? The sky. And the second heaven, the realm of the spirit. This unseen realm are where Satan wages war in our lives, drawing up battle strategies and issuing orders. That's why he traversed heaven and earth daily. Why? It's not omnipresent. Ang meron lang siya rito, mga minions niya. That's why nagre-report sa kanya every time. O, ano nang ginagawa ni ganito? Anong mga pwedeng ikaso natin sa kanya? Remember? Daniel chapter 10, Daniel prayed, and then the Lord sent the angel, Gabriel. And then after 21 days, saka dumating yung angel. Sabi ng angel, I have come in answer to your prayer. But the prince of Persia, the kingdom of Persia was standing in my way for 21 days. It's not a physical king or prince. It is a fallen son. It's a spirit. Sinasabi ni Gabriel, I was hostage for 21 earthly days. Then behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, come to help me, for I had been left there with the king of Persia. See? Daniel doesn't know about this, about it, after he prayed. He only saw that in the realm of the spirit, there is a war that's going on. 
But I shall now return to fight against the Prince of Persia. Kaya sabi niya, okay. Uh, Na-report ko na sa iyo yung pla ang gusto ng Diyos. Babalik ako roon because I will fight. So I'm leaving and behold, the Prince of Greece is about to come. However, I will tell you what is recorded in the writing of truth. Yet there is no one who stand firmly with me against these forces except Michael, your prince. See? Angel na nga, na hostage pa. Tayo pa kaya. That's why you cannot fight the devil to to to. You cannot even rebuke the fallen son. Why? It's clear in the scripture. Read in Jude. Chapter 1 verse 9. When Michael had a confrontation with the devil about the body of Moses, he did not raise a railing accusation against the devil. What he said, the Lord rebukes thee. Why? Because in a rule of court, it is only the judge has the power to rebuke. Psalm chapter 4 verse 8. We are created a little lower than the Elohim. So how can you fight them? And the only way you can fight him is only through the court, making him a dependent. They call it legislative prayer. Even in Zechariah chapter 3, read it, verse 1. Joshua the high priest is in front of the, of the judge. And the angel of the Lord and the devil is, is accusing Joshua, the high priest, of wearing a dirty linen, speaking of unrighteousness. And the angel of the Lord said, the Lord rebukes thee. Angel of the Lord John, referring to Jesus Christ. Why? It is only the judge has the power to rebuke. The angel was met with great demonic resistance. The battle that occurred is in the realm of the spirit. The source of his interference as the prince of the kingdom of Persia and the king, the kingdom of Persia, the prince of the kingdom of Persia and the kings of Persia. These princes are principalities of the highest level in the kingdom of darkness. You cannot just fight it. Mano mano. That's why sabi ni Lord, you are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Colossians 1.13, For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his, this, of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgave our sin. Satan's kingdom is organized as hierarchy, mga kapatid, which must like the military with general at the top and others under them who supervise those in the ranks on the ground. Huwag niyong paniwalaan yung sinasabi na si Satan ay hiwahiwalay. No, they are one. Si Jesus mismo ang nagsabi that they are one. Ang church pa ni Lord. Tayo pang mga pastor, hati-hati tayo, mga simbahan. Pero ang jablo hindi. They are one. For our struggle is not flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against powers, against world forces of this darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. While it is true, our case is in the court of heaven, will be against Satan's, his, his response can and will be far-reaching and will consist of hosts of different characters in the ranks of the kingdom of darkness. Hindi naman every time yung accuser na haharap sa'yo doon sa korte ay silagi si Satan, no? Satan is common na, adversary yan. Marami yung adversary. Iba-iba. Iba-ibang tao, iba-ibang believer, iba-iba ang nakakaharap natin na accuser. The enemy uses his kingdom to do battle in heavenly places. But what about on earth? Tinan po. Nung si Jesus Christ ay nasa lupa, di ba? Napadaan siya doon sa isang lugar. Ang sabi niya, sabi ng mga demonyo, What business do you have with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Kilala siya. 
I implore you by God, do not torment me. See, takot sila. For he had already been saying to him, come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, what is your name? And he said to him, my name is Legion, for we are many. And he begged him earnestly, nakiusap pa, not to send him out of the region. Why? The devil is territorial. Now there was a large herd of pigs feeding nearby on the mountain. And the demons begged him, saying, send us into the pig so that we may enter them. Jesus gave them permission. And coming out, the unclean spirit entered the pigs and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea. Now, God provides insight on how the kingdom of darkness operates on earth. Once gaining the legal right to operate through this man, kasalanan eh, kaya siya nakapasok. These demons were territorial entities that had been assigned to manipulate the events that occurred in the region of Gerasen, Gerasenes. Gerasenes, oh, di ba? Tinotorment niya yung mga tao doon, kaya yung iba ayaw dumaan doon eh, sa lugar na yun. Because of that spirit. And God knows that is a gate. That's why pinuntahan niya mismo yun. Kaya one of the characteristic of this spirit, they are territorial. Kasi di ba sabi ng Diyos, pag umalis yung isang espiritu siya sa tao, aalis siya, pupunta siya doon sa wilderness, pero babalik siya. Kasi wala siya ibang pupuntahan eh. Kasi pag pumunta siya sa kabilang teritoryo, meron din naman doon, ano, territorial spirit, hindi siya pwedeng maghari doon. Nakuha niyo? Satan attacks us because he presumes that we do not have the knowledge to stop him. That's one of the reasons also. He attacks us because he thought, he thought, wala tayong alam how to stop him. That's why sabi ng Hosea 4.6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Kung ating intindihin ng talata na ito, The Bible doesn't say that we are destroyed because we are overmatched or makapangyarihan siya kaysa sa atin. Or because we cannot win against the devil. No. We are destroyed because of what we do not know. Satan doesn't fear us. He fear the God in us. He understands that our spiritual losses come from our lack of knowledge and understanding of our relationship with the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you don't know that you are a son, talo ka. Because a son is only the one who has a right, a legal standing in his court. Kaya kung unbeliever, hindi siya pwedeng pumunta doon sa korte. Ikaw ang pwedeng mag-abogado sa kanya. Without this knowledge, we are fighting in the dark. In order to take the fight to the enemy, we must be familiar with who we are fighting. In the Art of War book, the first thing that you need to understand is who is your enemy. And where is the battle? We know our enemy is not a sundalo. He is a lawyer. That's why endaw sa kanya accuser. The Greek word is kategorio, an opponent in a court of law. Sa lupa ang tawag sa kanya ay piskal. Adversary. Satan is our adversary. Luke eighteen verse six. He is our adversary. Anti-Dikos means an opponent in law. So maliwanag kung sino ang ating kaaway. Now, where is the venue of our fight? It's in the court. Read Luke chapter 18. So to evict Satan from our lives, we must also understand and use appropriate legal channels. Because the realm of the spirit operates on a principle of law. So we will end here, mga kapatid.
now we understand what is the courts of heaven, what is our legal right, at ano yung legal right na binibigyan natin sa kaaway kung bakit tayo nagkakaroon ng ano, iba-ibang klasing atake mula sa kanya. Pero kung alam natin kung paano na dadalhin ang laban doon sa korte sa langit, then we will always win. At the end, this is my first experience in the courts of heaven. While we are in the court of heaven, I saw the accuser scratching his head. And then sabi niya dun sa isang kasama niya, How can we win against these people? The judge happens to be their father. Their lawyer, their defense lawyer, Jesus Christ, is their brother. And the Holy Spirit is their witness. How can we win? Sabi ng isang demonyo, meron pa sir, one way we can win over them. Make them ignorant about the courts of heaven and we will always win. Laging default judgment sila kasi hindi sila nag a sa court of heaven. So mga kapatid, this is our opportunity. Let us go and come to the courts of heaven. Amen? Let us pray. Lord, today we thank you. And we ask you to continually bless each one of us. That they will receive the revelation of the courts of heaven. And we can make... A good, a, and we can understand, Lord, that you have given us dominion over the earth. You gave us the power of attorney. You gave us that that I that has been transferred to us the dominion authority over the earth and our obligations and our work here on earth is to evict the squatter the devil that's why all authority in heaven and earth sabimo was given to you you did not return it to the father but you give it to us because we need that authority to take dominion dito sa lupa. In every territory or property you have given us, lalong-lalo na yung aming mga buhay at calling and destiny, na ito ay aming ma-fulfill. And the only way is we bring the battle into the realm of the Spirit, into the courtroom or to the courts of heaven. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this revelation and understanding. Bless each one of us today. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those who have their uh, communion elements, ay po ay magkaroon ng uh, communion ngayon. For I receive from the Lord.
the squadron. And it can only be done through the courts of heaven. Father, we thank you, Lord, for blessing us. And thank you, Lord, that we can bleed the blood of the Lamb. In every petition that we make in the courts of heaven. Thank you, Lord, because you are our advocate. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let us now thank the Lord and let's bring our tithes and offering and bless Him. Father, we thank you, Lord. We as your priest of the Most High, we are your Melchizedek priest. You are our high priest. And every priest is required to bring his tithes and offering to the high priest. And you are our high priest, Lord Jesus. And we're bringing our tithes and offering unto you. We thank you, Lord. Bless each one, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay? So, announcement? Let's greet uh, yung ating pong nasa Facebook, Susana Toronueva Okta. Thank you for watching. This is my classmate from Daet. Connie Mines, Connie Mines is from Cebu. Sinaida Diaz is watching. Marisol Vengazo is also watching. Maria Luz Martinez, JCR Mawirat, Janet Prohimo is watching. Estrella Halimao, Gretel May HM, and Melvin Vince and Bless. Joyce Ibasco Cruz is also watching. Pastor Leonardo Diaz from our house of prayer in Mount Apo, Kapatagan, Davao del Sur. Che Mawirat is watching. Enrique, Enrique Villa Cruz is also watching. Ani Pelayo. Uh, Brother Stanley and Sharon Bergara and Sister Gigi Alacaba, Jay Corazon and company uh, Corazon Co and others are watching also. Uh, we also have Sister Ana Dolores uh, at Zoom, Andy Rosales and his family, Adele. Irene and Big and Kia Senorin. Okay? Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Advertisement po natin, those who want coffee. Fit trim. Try nyo po ito, masarap. Uh, just type sa uh, Shopee. Fit trim or Nuta Green. Okay, ang cost lang po niyan is 10 is 299 But you order 3 boxes, free ang delivery. So, thank you. Okay, Sister Mimi, he, she owns that. It's from Bacolod. Okay, thank you very much po sa inyong lahat sa pag-join sa ating pong online prayer, uh, online worship service. Let us now close in prayer. Let us pray. Father, as we end this program, we want to give honor to you. Thank you, Abba, for all the marvelous things you have done today. Thank you for your love that you have revealed to us, and for the love that we share together as your body. May you bless each person who took the time to gather here today and let your hand of protection be on them throughout the rest of the week. Let the work done here come to fruition, and let it all be done for your glory. Bless each of us and keep us safe until we are able to gather together again. We pray for all the words that you have sown into our hearts this day. Watch over them, protect them. May they take route and produce wonderful things, things of beauty and great blessings to many. And as we leave this place now, thank you that you walk with us. May we be alert to your promptings and live in your endless love. For yours is the kingdom, the power and glory, in this age and forevermore. Amen.
Okay, maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. See you next Sunday sa ating pong uh, pagpapatuloy ng ating uh, series on making Satan a dependent in the courts of heaven. Okay. Thank you very much sa mga nasa Facebook. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. See you next week. Hallelujah!